Hey, welcome to Learn with Jared. Today we are going to talk about tasks and Notion and how using Todoist is really faster than using Notion for tasks. Now, I use Notion for tasks and Todoist, and the reason that I use both is because when I put tasks into Todoist and check them off, they just kind of go away. And that's great because the task is complete, but if I want to link that up to a project that I'm working on and I want to be able to track that project and I want to be able to connect that project to a client, uh, I need Notion for that. That is well beyond the capabilities of Todoist. So Todoist is fast because I can easily go in and enter new tasks and enter things like uh, today at 2.30 p.m., use the hashtag and then assign it to a project or an area and then enter it in, I get notifications. It's all pretty awesome and super simple. But I want those to be able to go over to Notion. Now a long time ago before Notion opened up their API, I actually, it's not a long time ago, it's fairly recent, but I, I switched from Todoist and just was utilizing Notion for my tasks because I didn't wanna to have to double entry everything. That was kind of a, a time consuming process. But now that I can enter a task in Notion and using Zapier automatically have that task uh, be created within Notion, so to do is to, to Notion, only entering things once, it's absolutely fantastic. So if I come here into uh, Todoist and I enter a new task and I add the project Hill Media Group and then I put like today at 5 30 p.m. and then click add task. Todoist is going to update that task. Of course it's there, but Zapier is going to connect and grab that task and then it's going to populate it into Notion. It takes a little bit of time. It's not totally instantaneous, but the process of this happening and me not having to do double entry is absolutely fantastic. So of course I do still have to check a task off in Todoist and then go and check it off in Notion. I could create another zap in order to update that task as complete, but the whole purpose of it being in Notion is that I can go and add the information to that task that I typically would, uh, would, would add to it. For example, connect it to the appropriate, um, the appropriate client and add in any additional details. Maybe it was connected to an interaction that I had. I can do that and connect it up as well. So that process is pretty great. So for example, if we're looking at um, this task right here, this is a, a photograph that I needed to take for a client. This task came in as a Todoist task that I added. So it came in with the title. It automatically put the status as next up. It brought in uh, the due date. It brought in the area, which is um, the kind of the, the project area from Notion. And then it automatically assigned it to me. And so I can come in here and fill in, you know, is this uh, typically, is it billable work or retained work? Um, I can assign it uh, an amount of time to this, so maybe it's going to take me two hours. Is it connected to an interaction? Is it connected to a client or a project? And then down in the description here, I can add any additional details. Sometimes I even throw the completed assets there to make them easy for me to grab later on. So this process of using Todoist to get all of the tasks entered that I need really fast and then allowing Zapier to connect makes the process much faster. So I wanted to show you how that works. We're gonna go over to the web browser here and take a look at this Zap. You can see I've got Todoist to Notion here. So add Hill Media Group Todoist task to Notion task. And so we'll open this up and take a look at what is connected. So you can see that a new incomplete task in Todoist is going to create a database item in Notion. Now if you're not sure how all of this Zapier stuff works, check out my recent video that I uploaded on how to connect Zapier and Notion. That will show you how to set up all of this stuff because obviously Zapier is not naturally just going to have access to your Todoist and your Notion. There's a little bit of a setup process there that's really simple, but in that video I walk you through the process. So uh, here we choose Todoist, we choose that it is a new incomplete task that's added. There are a lot of other, a couple other options, I guess not a lot, new complete, new completed, and new project that uh, 
uh, we can add as well, then I would choose my Todoist account. I would set up the trigger which is, uh, the trigger is when the project is Hill Media Group because I can't leave this wide open. I have multiple projects in Todoist. Uh, for example, um, some items I tag uh, my name, Jared Hill, that's a project. So that's for, for a task for one of my own uh, projects that I'm working on. And then Hill Media Group, I will tag it Hill Media Group for anything that has to do with my business. And then I also have Home and I think two others that will go and make sure that the area is selected correctly. So you can see here I've got a few different areas for different projects of mine. Right now I'm just using Hill Media Group, Household, and Personal. That keeps it pretty simple um, for setting up the zaps. And let's go back to Zapier. So it's connected to that project. That way Zapier knows which to do as task to bring over and put into that area. And then I would test the trigger here. It brings in a recent task so that I can uh, use that data to test the trigger. Now, if we look at the setup here for Notion, uh, we're gonna make sure we're connected to Notion. It's gonna create a new database item. Now, there aren't a lot of options here uh, with Notion and Zapier. It's either create a database item, update a database item, or find one. Uh, and so basically it's just create and update. So I can create a new with this trigger or I can update an existing. It won't be able to update an existing if the existing doesn't exist. So, and if I choose update database item, it you have to select that database item uh, ahead of time. So this is not extremely useful for me. Uh, create a database item is the useful one. And then you choose your account you set up the action, and here's where you tell Zapier how to take the Todoist data and map it over to Notion. You choose the right database, so I'm in my, I have my tasks database chosen. You choose that you want the content name, so the name of the task uh, in the task name. Looks like I'm adding it twice, I don't want that. And then under priority, I could choose a priority, and it's gonna pull in all of my priorities from Notion that I have in that particular database. I can uh, choose whether it's done, true, or false. And so by default, it's gonna be unchecked. False is unchecked, true is checked. And so I just left that blank. I could put in a default amount of time for this task so that I don't forget to update time. At least I have a number in there. Um, I have uh, my area, which is those different areas that we looked at. I have Hill Media Group selected. And so this is where you see that if you have different projects in Todoist that you wanna bring over, you either have to select, if you want the project to automatically be selected over in Notion, you're gonna to have to select the project here and you're gonna to have to set up a separate zap for each, I guess, area in my case here, or project. So I can also choose tasks if I wanted to, it brings in all of my tags, I mean. I could choose tags and it brings in all of those. Here's where I uh, bring in my, my due date. So it's also showing me other fields that are in my tasks. For example, this one notes that I don't really use anymore. Uh, I'm bringing in notes down here in the content data because I would rather have the note information. So for example, a note that I put in the task show up down here in the content um, and instead of in this section here, which uh, wouldn't make sense. So. I also have assigned to Jared. I also can choose whether this was a task that I um, have invoiced a person for yet or not. Um, these are all things that are coming in from options that are here in my tasks manager. And if you're interested in how I manage tasks in Notion, I have a video on that. I'll make sure to link to that down in the description below too. This has changed a lot since I started using Notion, how I keep track of all of my tasks and how I assign them to, uh, to myself, to others, how I connect them to uh, clients, to client projects, how I know whether or not it's a task that I need to invoice somebody for, how much time I spent on that task, all of those things I track in Notion. So once I'm done, of course, I hit continue, and now my mapping of Todoist to Notion is complete, and then I can actually, before turning on the Zap, it usually will allow you to test that zap to make sure that it works and then you can turn on the zap 
and then the zap is going to be working here uh, from here on out. So uh, but when you create a new task, it's going to show up over here and uh, it can take a little bit of time. You can see, um, I don't think that our task has shown up that we created in Todoist a few minutes ago, uh, but I could also be experiencing a little bit of a, a slow internet at the time here. So utilizing Zapier to connect Todoist to Notion is so much faster than having to do double entry. I hope that this little walkthrough kind of gave you a look at how this works. If you want my Zap, you can actually download the Zap. You can see here it gives me the option to share this Zap with other people. Uh, click on the link down below to see my Notion templates and other resources. You can get uh, the Zap right from that page and add it right to your Zapier account. Zapier is free for up to, I think, three to five Zaps. And so you can set them up and kind of see how they work and whether or not this uh, method of connecting other apps to Notion is gonna work out for you. Um, and there's also that other tutorial that teaches you uh, how to connect Zapier to Notion and gives you an example of connecting Google Calendar to Zapier as well to update a calendar uh, in Notion. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you have any questions, definitely ask me down in the comment section below. Get those resources down in the description. And I also have my Master Notion course that's available linked down in the description below. If you wanna check that out, uh, it definitely helps you learn everything that there is to know about Notion. And I'm in the process of adding a Zapier section to that. So probably by the time you read this, there will be a Zapier section in that uh, course as well. So that's gonna do it for the video today. Make sure to click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and we'll see you back in the next one. Take care.